Welcome to The Motivational Midwife. I'm Lynn Jones and today we're going to have a short session looking at abbreviations and terminology commonly used in midwifery. Looking at some of the abbreviations that we commonly use in midwifery. Okay, so there is actually an approved list of abbreviations, and really you should be only using those abbreviations that are approved within your um, work area because different abbreviations actually can have different meanings in different environments. And there's one or two examples I'll give as we go on. Obviously, this list is not exhaustive. Um, and from an academic perspective, if you are writing, um, using an abbreviation in an academic piece of work, then the first time you use it, you need to write it in full. And the ones that commonly get forgotten are things like GP, uh, NHS. So the first time you use GP, you need to write general practitioner and then GP in brackets, and then you can use GP. Likewise, NHS, National Health Service. NHS and in brackets, and then you can use it throughout the rest of your work. So looking at some of the abbreviations that are often used uh, antenatally, so gravida, which is the number of times someone's been pregnant, um, and that's usually written as a, a G with a number after it, and parity is the number of times someone's actually given birth. Um, so it is a bit more complicated than that, but uh, generally you will see gravida, perhaps gravida one power, G1PO would be pregnant for the first time, but she hasn't actually had any babies, so she hasn't delivered any babies. And you have to think about uh, she might be a gravida one para two, and that would tell you actually that she had twins. So prima gravida actually means pregnant for the first time. Prima paris means that she's delivered her first baby. Uh, Multigravida, um, pregnant for second or subsequent, and multiparasis had more than one baby. So your synthesis fundal height, this is um, the measurement that we usually do, and it's from the fundus, top of the fundus, over the bump to the upper border of the synthesis pubis. And that's for measuring the uh, gestation and, and, and very, very loosely it equates to the number of weeks she is. Okay, gestation is obviously uh, often written as um, the number of weeks over 40, 40 being um, the number of weeks we take as term. And then in, in relation to the position of the baby, the uh, occiput, or ox, uh, I've got my, my little, I'll use my little baby here, and my tiny one. So this would be your occiput here. So occipito anterior is the, the most usual position. So that would be written as an OA and occipito lateral. So that would be at the side would be OL and occipito posterior would be, which is your OP babies would be written OP. And obviously in front of that, you would either have a, an L or an R depending if it's on the right or the left. Midstream urine is an MSU, so this is where you would ask someone to pass the urine, pass a little bit, catch the middle piece into the container that you've given them, and then pass the rest. So that's a, a midstream specimen of urine. Blood pressure, um, heart rate and respiration rates are, are usually um, abbreviated to BP, uh, HR for heart rate or MP, maternal pulse, uh, and respiration rate is obviously RR. Uh, LMP, so your last menstrual period, that's the first day of the last period, uh, and it's used to help you calculate the estimated date of delivery or the EDD, although that's a whole other discussion um, on how accurate that is or not, as the case may be. 
Uh, antenatally is often abbreviated to AN, intrapartum IP and postnatal PN. Uh, you may see uh, precip written, which is precipitous, which means somebody's had a very, very rapid labor. Um, spontaneous rupture of membrane. So this is where their waters have gone. Uh, they've broken uh, spontaneously, no interference from us. And that's often written as from. And prolonged rupture of membranes. This is uh, currently deemed to be longer than 18 or 24 hours, depending whether there are risk factors for group B strep as well. And that's usually written as prom. And per vaginum, PV. Uh, children's social care. Now, this is, is um, something that it, you probably hear more as child protection, but it's, it's, much, it's a much bigger umbrella than just child protection. So it comes, children um, in need come under this as well as as actual child protection. So you may see that written as CSC, so children's social care. Body mass index, obviously we calculate that in the um, antenatal period and um, at other points throughout pregnancy to help us risk assess. Now, uh, interuterine death, IUD, now this is one of those uh, abbreviations that actually can mean something completely different because if we're thinking about contraception, then an IUD is an interuterine device or a, a coil. So this is where you do need to be mindful of the context in which you're using um, abbreviations. Stillbirths are often written as SB and you may see that um, along with uh, the gravida and parity, you may see uh, G1, P1, but in brackets, it may say S SB or um, neonatal death, NND, which I don't think I've got on here. So you may see that. Um, past medical history is sometimes written. You see doctors using this quite a lot as uh, just PH. And treatment is often um, abbreviated to TX as well. And the, these ones you will often see in doctors' handheld or handwritten notes. Um, it, not specifically intrapartum, but often you'll use these ones much more in labour. So PU for past urine, for also the baby PUs and bowels open BO. Artificial rupture of membrane. So this is where we have broken the woman's waters uh, as part, usually as part of an induction process, um, but maybe part of, uh, of labor, depending on what else is going on. Uh, v is vaginal examination. And cardiotocograph, the C CTG, this is the monitoring equipment that we, uh, you will often see within the hospital to uh, monitor the baby's heart rate and also monitor the contractions. So it's um, a piece of equipment that has two transducers. So one has a like a pressure pad on which will pick up the changes in pressure um, when she has a contraction and the other one will pick up the baby's heart rate. And then that's translated into a what used to be a paper readout. Now it's in a lot of cases in, it's an electronic trace readout that you can see. Uh, spontaneous or normal vaginal delivery. So you will see both written depending uh, which part of the country you're in. So some, some midwives write SVD, some midwives write NVD. Uh, forceps delivery is sometimes written as FD, but it's, it's more often than not their Neville Barnes forceps. So you will often see it written as an NBV FD as well. And Von Tues. Now Von Tues used to be a, a big old piece of equipment, which was like a big plastic um, and metal in some instances cup that went on the baby's head and then uh, was attached to a machine that you had to turn the pressure up um, to get suction. Uh, more often than not, you don't see those very much at all anymore, um, but more often than not now we use Kiwi cups, which are a small handheld plastic device that do the same the same job. So often when it is a Von Tues, it's a Kiwi delivery that we're looking at, not Von Tues in the old um, sense. Uh, Caesarean sections, sometimes you'll see them written as CS, but uh, it is actually a lower segment Caesarean section. So that's what LSCS stands for. 
uh, gestational diabetes mellitus, so GDM, this means that they have developed diabetes as a, a result of being pregnant and more often than not once the pregnancy ends then the um, symptoms of that will resolve but there is some evidence to suggest that these women will go on to develop diabetes in later life. Preeclampsia is often abbreviated to PET and your insulin dependent diabetics so these are your generally your type 1 diabetics um, is IDD you will see that written and uh, in terms of auscultating the fetal heart um, you will often see it written as FHHR which is fetal heart heard and regular so you, you've not heard any ectopic beats you've not heard any um, decelerations or that you're concerned about and sometimes it is just written as FH as well. Cervix will be abbreviated often to CX and then looking at some uh, abbreviations that are used in administration of medication so orally is usually PO and IV and IM would be intravenous and intramuscular so intravenous it's going directly into the vein um, and you do need uh, venous access for that more often than not these would be things like um, antibi some antibiotics um, sometimes just uh, fluids uh, as part of a part of the epidural or for other reasons intramuscular medication um, can be things like anti-d or pethidine dimorphine Subcuticular, this means it just goes just under the skin. So it's, 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 it's not as deep, it's, it's, it's not as deep as an intramuscular. It's just going into that, um, just a bit below. It's, it's, so these type of uh, ones that are subcuticular are things like um, your Delta Parin, um, Plexane, things like that. Uh, inhalation analgesia is things like entinox, so your gas and air. And sublingual means it goes under the tongue or uh, buccal, you'll sometimes see it written as where it goes in inside the cheek pouch there and the medication needs to dissolve and be absorbed that way. Um, per vaginum, so that would be um, things like caniston. Um, so for thrush and per rectum so this would be medication that goes directly into the rectum so most commonly in maternity that would be diclofenac so Voltarol which is usually given after somebody has had some stitching done for analgesic purposes. Transcutaneous means it's going through the skin okay so um, it's given through the skin and uh, epidural because it is going directly into the epidural space and the prescription is often written uh, if you're looking at uh, notes uh, particularly from a doctor they will often put prescribed px and then whatever it is uh, their plan and prescription of care is and there you have it, a whistle-stop tour of some of the more common abbreviations and terminology used in midwifery. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And also look for us on our Facebook page, The Motivational Midwife. I look forward to seeing you next time.